right, we are back with Behind the Bikini, and it is episode 24. 24. 24. We're doing, we're doing good here. We're doing good here. We're, yeah. we're staying consistent. That's why we always talk about being consistent. Consistent is, is important. So we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So speaking of consistent, you've been home for you know a few weeks now. So how are things going over there? Good. Really good. Just super busy with work and my prep or not like prepping, you know, not prepping, but growing season and just staying busy, you know, yeah. it's, this is the time of year to get caught up. So yeah, that's it. How about you? <laughs> you have lots of things. Going on. I know lots of things going on. Well, um, yeah. So before I forget, cause I, I did just forget as I told I to move things over to you. I was like, subscribe, like comment, all of the fun things. Um, we do take your comments. Like today we're going to go through some listener questions and things like that, that have come in in the comments, um, here on, on the YouTube channel plus in, in Instagram as well too. Um, and, uh, you know, we always start this, this podcast up and kind of, kind of give you guys an update of where we are personally. And then we go into the, the topic of the, of the session today. So today's topic is going to be why we became coaches, because that's kind of what I've been up to. <laughs> so, um, we can talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about it now. Um, so we knew this last week, we knew this during the, the podcast last week, but we hadn't actually made it official yet. Um, because I was just kind of getting all the check boxes put out there and all that kind of stuff. But um, I have decided to actually take on the role of coaching as well. So yeah, all the things. <laughs> so um, if you guys have been with us for a little while, um, we talked about how uh, goals for the new year. Um, I mentioned that I'm kind of checking off the things in my life that don't give me a whole lot of return, if that makes sense. So it's like finding, um, finding those things that you don't want to be chasing but things down bunny holes, right? So one of the things I've been thinking about for a very long time is is taking on the aspect of coaching, and I just never did um, because I just felt like I couldn't. So um, it, it, a lot of different things, but um, I guess we can jump right into that since we're some are talking about it. We don't need to, I don't need an update. Off season's going good. Whatever. I've got my check in tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we'll touch on that stuff as we go. So um, if you notice, I'm trying to keep things more organized here so we have like our bullet points and we stay on track. <laughs> Those of you guys that have been listening for a little while, if you haven't noticed, like in the description box below these videos, I do bullet point where everything starts as far as time frame is concerned. So if there's a specific topic that you come here to listen to, you can jump right ahead to it. So um, today's uh, topic, we're going to talk about why we, why we became coaches. Um, I think this is this is an interesting thing to talk about too because we always talk about our why when it comes to competing, but I don't think we talk about our why when it come, becomes coaches, right? So you know, I've been opposing coach forever, for you know, ever, ever, but now I've decided to take on the the training and diet aspect of it too. So, um, so why don't you tell me why did you decide to go down the coaching route, and then we can kind of go we can go from there. So I actually became a nutrition coach in twenty. 20- 20, um, during COVID, you know, when my gym was shut down for almost 90 days, I still wanted to provide my customers something that they could do from home. Um, so during COVID, like we had uh, a home gym, but not a lot of people wanted to come to the home gym just because of the state of our country at that time. So I took it upon myself at that time to get my nutrition certification and, and use that time wisely. Um, because of COVID, I was able to accomplish the nutrition certification in just a couple of weeks. And then I started to take on clients from the gym that were already paying members of the gym, but they were getting just now a different service at that point. So it allowed me to to practice with lifestyle clients. Um, At this time, I was competing for less than a year at this point, and I had no interest in being a bodybuilding coach. Um, I had a coach at the time. I saw what he was doing with athletes. I knew that I couldn't do what he did at that time time. Um, You know, being a bodybuilding coach is there's a lot of complexity when it goes into it. It's not just about food and exercise and, you know, lifestyle clients. It's, it's easier in the way that, you know, there's just one set goal and, you know, just kind of doing a little bit of manipulation here and there with bodybuilding, you have to be so encompassed. And I didn't think that I was experienced enough for that. And I wasn't at the time. Um, So I became a lifestyle coach and I love lifestyle coaching. Like lifestyle coaching is one of my favorites. You know, it is, the, the most joyous type of coaching, in my opinion, just because everyone is so happy with their results. Mm-hmm. Um, you take somebody that has terrible blood work and they're getting their labs re- reviewed and, and they're improving. They're seeing their belly fat drop. They're just so happy with the changes that they're seeing. 
Um, and that's what really lit the fire in me. So what started as like just a little bit of a project in 2020, then my clients, you know, when, you know, the gyms reopened and things like that, they were like, oh no, this is something that I want to continue now. I'm out to make this a lifestyle. Um, and it really wasn't until what, what year are we in 2024, really like the end of 2020 or sorry, like early part of 2022 really is when I started to take on athletes. And it was because when I became a, um, coach for Fit Body Fusion. And we have so much support under our roof of, you know, learning and coaches collaboration. And I took it upon myself to do a couple of um, continuing education courses and whatnot as well. Um, and that's when I was like, all right, I think I can do this. And I started with just a couple of clients that I knew for cheap. And um, I was like, okay, I, I can do this. Like this, this is yeah. something I can do, you know, but I was so hesitant. And because I know that everyone does this thing where, you know, they do, they're an athlete for five minutes and they call themselves a coach. And I didn't want to be that person. You know, I take my job extremely seriously. I want to make sure that when I lay my head down at night, all of my people are taken care of and they're healthy, number one. And I wanted to make sure that if I was going to take someone like that, that I wanted to get them to that place. So my why as a coach now, when I think about it, is that, you know, I want to make sure that the athlete has a great experience. I think so often right now that new NPC athletes or new amateur athletes have such a terrible first prep for whatever reason. Maybe it was the show experience, the promoter, maybe it was the coaching itself, you know, but they get this terrible vision of what a prep looks like and then they don't return yeah. back to the sport and that's what i've seen a lot over the last couple of years is that the sport's growing but it's not growing threefold like it should be with how many new athletes we see because a lot of them don't come back yeah. and so i want to make sure that i do it always the healthy way and the honest way and always set expectations and i love seeing my girls come off stage and they're beaming from ear to yeah. ear and their experience and they did it healthy and they feel good and they have the energy. They don't feel like they had to do three hours of cardio a day and they're coming off the stage feeling like a zombie. And they're like, I did all this for this 30 seconds where I didn't even, you know, have an experience. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really why I continue to, to do it. And I, now my roster is pretty much 70, 75 to 80% athletes and yeah. about 15 lifestyle coaching and i love both i really do i absolutely love both um for for their different ways yeah well you know i'm kind of kind of the same thing as you but kind of a little different too i've been in the industry forever right and i've seen just like you said the bad experiences right um i've had some really terrible coaching experiences personally um don't know how i'm still alive <laughs> some of them really and to be honest those those were the reasons why I kind of shied away from coaching myself for a long period of time because I was just like like you said somebody becomes an athlete for five minutes and all of a sudden they're a coach and I didn't want to be that person and I realized that with um coaching beyond posing you are literally taking somebody's health into your hands and that's that's a huge responsibility it's a huge responsibility and for a very very long time I didn't feel like the bodybuilding lifestyle was sustainable. I felt like it was one of those things where it's like you did it and then you just went back to normal, normal. And that's why you see, like you said, you see so many people that just fall off completely. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until I started working with Jamie. And the reason why I started working with Jamie is because I wanted it to be sustainable. Like I could see people having better experiences than I was. You know, and I was like, I was like, there's got to be a better way to do this than tilapia and asparagus every freaking meal. There has to be a better way to do this. You know what I mean? Um, so I started working with her almost four years ago at this point. And the good thing about, like you said, having that support system behind you with FitBody is it's not about me relying on Jamie as my coach. It's about her making me feel like I'm sustainable by myself. You know, she's there to to guide me and to give me another eye and things like that. But I feel like I can guide myself at the same time. Like I'm not completely lost. I don't feel like as soon as I come out of a prep, it's over. You know what I mean? Like I felt that way with a lot of coaches. They would just be like, okay, well, come back to me when you're ready to prep again. You know, that kind of thing. Like that was literally some of the responses I got from past coaches. And that's not how this works at all. No, um, it's like your most vulnerable moment. Yes, that's when the coach 100%. needs to be hyper-focused on the athlete is the Absolutely. Post show. And those were the things, those were the things previously that kept me away from coaching. Right. Sure. And so as I went along, this has really been happening for the last time since I've been working with Jamie for like four or five years, this kind of thing. Like my husband, Dan, he's like, you know, you give out so much information. You really should be getting paid to, to do this. And I was like, 
I know, but I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel confident in doing that. And, but what I found myself doing, they always say that you're going to find your passion in the, like what you do when you're not like getting paid to do something or whatever. So I find myself when I'm in my downtime going on like Facebook boards and helping like newly competitors and giving little tips and tricks and things like that. I'm like, I'm doing this when I don't need to be, you know what I mean? I'm doing this because I feel like I want to, um, and I don't need to be doing this. So what was the catalyst? You know, we started, we started sitting there and talking about goals for the new year. And I'm like, you know, at this point, this is where I got to figure out if this is something I want to do. You know what I mean? I've been, I've been kicking, kicking the tire for long enough. I got to figure out if this is something I want to do. So I started taking certifications. I started getting, doing the, 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 the NASM certification for, you know, being a, becoming a prep and bodybuilding coach and all that stuff. And I found myself excited to go back and learn the next day and pull open the, the textbook material again the next day. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> it's like, I think this is actually something I want to do. I think this is something, this is the direction I want to go because I feel like very can, telling. Yeah. I feel like I can help people, but I feel like I enjoy this as well. You know what I mean? Like I want to do this. I want to help people have a better experience. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? And then also on that lifestyle topic of this. Um, so I think most everybody knows my dad uh, was diagnosed with skin cancer this past year and you know, he went through a bunch of stuff and radiation and all that kind of stuff. And, um, so when I was on the phone with him, uh, I, when this whole, whole thing started, I was like, dad, if you just adjust some of your lifestyle, you're going to be able to get through this a lot easier. You know, what you put in your mouth, you know, how your activity level is mostly what you put in your mouth every day is, is going to make a difference on your diagnosis and your, your outcome with this fighting this cancer and everything. Right. So I was talking to my parents and my mom was like, yeah, when he went in for his blood work, um, they basically pegged him as being you know, diabetic with his, the way his um, levels were and everything like that. And she's like, and at that point I told him he needed to, he needed to listen to, to me and stop eating sugar and carbs and all this kind of stuff. So first of all, carbs are not the devil. However, if you have cancer, they are. So if you have can cancer feeds on sugar. So if you have cancer, you need to eliminate as much of that as you can so that, the, that you can starve the cancer out. So, you know, I, I told my dad, I was like, you need to really adjust your, your diet and that would really help, you know? So um, so he finally did all of that and guess what? His blood work came back normal <laughs> and like all of a sudden he was no longer like diabetic, you know, levels, that kind of thing. And is normal again because he stopped putting the crap in his mouth that he shouldn't have been putting in his mouth. And that alone is going to help him with his fight on his, on his cancer. And, you know, a lot of people, like there's lots of, you know, anecdotal evidence out there where people didn't have to go through radiation things like that because they adjusted their lifestyle and stuff like that. Again, it's anecdotal. It's not, you know, it's not empirical evidence or anything like that, but it's just a proven fact that if you get rid of sugar, cancer can't grow. You start right. it. So, and, and your diet affects everything. Yes, <laughs> That's, correct. That is a proven fact. So exactly, exactly. So I, you know, I told my dad the other day, I was like, so I was like, I'm officially a coach now. So you have to listen to me now. <laughs> Oh my God. My dad is the worst client. I mean, my dad has a slew of health issues, but he will not listen to me. I'm like, if you just listen to me, I swear, I promise I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you don't have to go through all this stuff if you can just change some daily things, you know? So going back to, this was something somebody asked me if I was going to be taking on lifestyle clients and yes, I will be taking on lifestyle clients. Um, along with competition and all of that as well. So I'm kind of the, the flip opposite of that from you where I'm starting out with the, with the competition people more so than the lifestyle. Um, but it is something that I want as well because the other part of it too, is I go back to, um, you know, bodybuilding, I feel like is, is ever evolving, but when it comes to having a healthy lifestyle, it's having a healthy lifestyle, you know, enjoying your daily, your daily activities. Right. And I feel like, you know, in, in general, most people will bodybuild. This is proven from the statistics I brought in from my own clientele, right? Women will stay in the bodybuilding industry for about three years at, on average, um, you know, if you're, if you're in it over three years, you're in it for a long period of time. And like you said, some people are, you know, one and done and they're out. So I want to be able to have the ability to help women that are not only competing, but are like transitioning out of that into regular life and things like that too. You know, so going into the lifestyle aspect or creating lifestyle habits first so that they can then eventually go into the competing part portion of it. Right. So I think all of it ties together and bodybuilding is going to be for a season of your life, whereas your life is your full life, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that I think that they both tie in together. I don't think it's one or the other. I think they tie in. Um, yeah. it's about creating better quality of life in general. So, um, so when it comes down to that, yes, I will be taking a lifestyle as well. So, um, 
you know, and, and just at the end of the day, like for me too, um, I, I could be wrong, but I think now at this point, I am going to be the only person who has the entire package within my wheelhouse, meaning like the suit, the posing, the makeup, the hair, the, the t- training, the diet, everything. I'm like, I am going to have 100% control <laughs> over the clients that I put on stage. Yeah. And like, okay, I'm a Virgo. Like we like, we like having perfection and control. So like, I like the fact that I'm going to be able to give my clients everything that they need right here cohesively. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, and then going back to what you said too, about the whole fit body background, that's one of the reasons why I decided to come on with fit body because I realize I'm, I'm going to be new at coaching, but I also realize being in underneath the fit body fusion banner. If I have a question, I have all of you guys behind me, I can ask, I can ask those questions about. So it's not just me. You're getting a brain, like I always say, brain trust. You're getting a brain trust of everybody in the whole freaking team that can help me if I need, if I need help. And you can probably speak to that too. I mean, does that, is that something that kind of gives you comfort at the end of the day, as far as knowing that you have people that can help where maybe that's not your level of expertise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wish I had this level of support when I started coaching, you know, I think I would have been confident a lot sooner and would have learned so much faster. Yeah. Um, I I appreciate the journey that I took. It really made me put my nose to the ground and really like learn my career. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, currently something newer that's on Fit Body right now is that once a week, uh, Drew and Jamie get on a call together and it's open to all of our coaches. So if you want to pop on the call and you have an athlete that you want to show them, or you have a blood blood work panel you want to run by them, or just an idea or a thought or whatever, they're there and ready for you for that hour to answer that question. And I came upstairs yesterday, um, I was on my own set of calls and there was like four or five coaches on there. And then all, when when you're coming on there to ask a question to Drew Drew or Jamie yourself, but now all of the coaches were collaborating together. And it's not just Drew and Jamie at this point, it's, hey, I have something that I can help you with that, or this is what I did with my client. And it's, we have such a collaborative effort on this team and all of us coach completely differently. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different uh, personalities and that's Mm -hmm. what makes Fit body so unique because not every client's going to get along with me and not every right. client's going to get along with you, but we, that's why we have our different personalities. So yep. it's been, it's been really, really cool. And we also have a coaches chat. So if anytime we're like, Hey, we're stuck on this or Hey, this client's having an issue with this. Like, is there anybody else that has a client that I could put them in touch with each other? And then mm-hmm. we're connecting different teams and different clients and creating that support and that family that we truly have on this team. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, I, I can speak from, being a posing coach for as long as I have been, I have a few coaches that I work with their clients that they're phenomenal. They'll come to me and they'll ask me questions all the time about their clients. Um, and what ends up happening is their clients end up progressing a whole lot faster because we, we can work together as coaches. You know what I mean? But then I have the opposite of that as well. So for me, as somebody who's a posing coach, who does have a good eye, who does have a good understanding of you know training and diet, has an understanding of everything from, from top to bottom, when somebody doesn't want to collaborate with me and use what I've got right here that I can give you, it's training for me. I'm like, because I, I want your client, I want our client to be at their very best. You know, I, I, that's what I want. I want them to shine. I want them to get to where they, their goals are and things like that. But if you don't come talk to me, and you just decide to do it on your own, like there, there's pieces missing. There's pieces missing. And I, and I, and I don't mean to say this, you know, braggadociously or anything, but I know what the fuck I'm looking at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've been in this for a long period of time. Use my eye. Yeah. Use my eye to help you as a coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that. I mean, I, I, there's very few women in our sport that have been around for 15 years. There's very right. few of us, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I, I, I can help you in ways that you, as a new coach, maybe you've only been coaching for five years or something like that. Maybe you as a new coach, you don't see it yet. I can, I can help you. I can help yeah. you. That's you know, a great point. Yeah. There's again, there's some coaches that are phenomenal at that. They'll come to me all the time and say, Hey, can you help me with such and such blah, blah, blah. But the majority of them are not. The majority of them are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Territorial and scared, scared to collaborate. Right. Yeah. I actually just picked up a client that way. You know, she, was with another coach and she said, Hey, like, I want to go to Jordan for posing coaching. And the coach said, absolutely not. 
And she was like, oh, okay, why? Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't a reason. And the client kind of saw right through that. They were like, yes. oh, well, maybe you don't want me seeing someone else, maybe because of your lacking or yep. your perceived you're of what you're lacking. Exactly. So yep. actually the client ended up coming to my team because- yep. It's the scarcity they, mindset. They feel like if, if they let you take any kind of um, buy-in on it, they're going to lose They're gonna lose that client. When yeah. in reality, what just happened is typically what happens. Either, it either yeah. happens now or it happens later, right? Yep. Yeah. Like, and to me, they, though, like I would rather collaborate. Because right. I have girls that are seeing a personal trainer in their hometown and they're making yeah. such great progress because they have that person next to them. If I didn't have that trainer next to them, I can't do my job successfully. Yes. Or posing coaches. I have a girl. She knows that, I, you know, posing is a part of my package that I give. She's like, hey, I just really want someone in person. Can I pose with this person? And I really yeah. like them. Sure. Yeah. Of course. That's helping me. That's so right. co- to me is a beautiful thing and not something to be scared of, you know, good example. Experience. Yeah. Good example is, you know, this, this whole me coming out with fit body happened in a perfect time because I'm coming out to Arizona this coming weekend for the coaches weekend, which for those of you guys who don't know, they do a weekend once a year and they do training and all that kind of stuff. Perfect example is as soon as I signed on, Jamie was like, I want you to do an assessment with Drew and figure out how we can better fine tune your programming for me personally so that I'm hitting my glutes and not growing my waist. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Sign me up. You know, so as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be um, doing an assessment with, you, with Drew on Sunday when, I, when I'm out there. And again, that's a collaboration because that's Drew's specialty. That's what he's good at. You know what I mean? And Jamie realizes that, hey, go, go work out with him and find out where we can make your, your training better for you. You yep. know, and that's, and that's how you do it. That's how you do it. You go to somebody and say, listen, can you help me out here? There's no, there's, there's no reason to be, you know, scared. There's no reason to be territorial. There's no reason for any of that. Right. No. And I think with some like, you know, coaches, like, listen, we all have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. Yeah. And that's what we're, you know, fit body, we're trying internally to like really create like a new era and like a new mm-hmm. presence. Cause we want to make sure that all athletes have everything they need. And for yep. coaches, you know, if you're by yourself, you're going to miss something. You're not going to be yes. best at the training or you're not going to be best at the diet portion or maybe not best at the peds portion. So you're lacking in some sort of way as an individual. But when we have a team of expert coaches that all have different backgrounds and expertise in, in, in one thing, we can all come together and really help the athlete succeed. And I think that's what we're really trying to to make our foundation is that we want somebody that's really great with training. And now we're getting all mm-hmm. of our training videos redone and we're building new programs for athletes. And now they have the training piece. And then you have your coach that you picked that you have that, that connection with, and that can run the diet for you and, and, and all of these things. And that's, that's, what's really exciting about this year is because that's what the direction we're heading towards is that yeah. every athlete should have access to a fantastic piece of training, coach, everything. Yes within our one hub. Yep. You know, and you take that over to the business world. I mean, why do you think these bi- these big businesses have boards of directors? And there's a reason. They bring in people that have expertise in their field, put their two cents in to make that business the best it possibly can be. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it translates over to every portion of our life. I mean, that's why the U.S. is the way it is, why we don't have a king or a queen. That's why we have a president that's elected by the people and the people elect their representatives, blah, blah, blah. We all work together. To yes. create the best possible solution, right? Yeah. That's what it's about. Now, I I will say our country's a little messed up on the politics aspect of it right now. So <laughs> it's like they need to learn to work together. Yeah. yeah we <laughs> all do. Not, probably not the best option. Yeah. Example right there at this point in time. Um, <laughs> but that's a totally We knew what you meant. Yeah, that's a totally different topic. Um, that's the, that's the, that's the driving force behind it. The driving force behind it is to lift everybody up. If we all row together, we're going to get there faster versus one person just rolling on one side and going in a circle. Right. right. So, yeah, um, going back to the, the why, um, I, it just became something where I couldn't deny it was something I, I had a passion for anymore. You know what I mean? I'm like, at, at this point, it's like, okay, like I said, I'm, I'm doing this on my downtime. I'm doing this when I don't have to be. I'm doing this because I enjoy and I look, I'm look, I, I'm, a, I'm a problem solver. Like whenever I took my aptitude tests and stuff when I was younger, they all said I should be an engineer because I'm really good at putting pieces together where they fit and creating that, that full puzzle piece. So I'm really good at that. So I'm always the person out there looking at problems and trying to find solutions for them. Right. I mean, that's where Cutie's Carpenter Stage came from. I was looking Absolutely. at a problem, I found a solution. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So like that's, that's, that's what I do. That's what I thrive at. That's what I enjoy doing more than anything else. That's why I love bodybuilding too, because there's always something. It's like, I want to find a solution for this issue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so, not cut and dry, not with every yeah. person, with every client. That's what I love it too. You know, clients always get uh, frustrated with themselves when they feel like they're a difficult client when they're yep. prepping, right? Like, so yep. like I have two girls right now, they both started prep the same time. Both of them haven't dropped a pound in the last four weeks. And they're like, well, I'm so sorry. I don't know why my body's not responding. I'm like, don't be, don't apologize. I love this shit. Like this is, yeah, this figure is it out. Me, yeah, this is what mm -hmm. gets my, my gears going as a coach. We're going to figure this out. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Then before you know it, we figure it out. And that's what keeps me sharp as well. That's right. The clients that are just cut and dry. Great. Awesome. Like, uh, believe me, we all love an easy prep. But the ones yeah. that are really challenging me are the ones that keep me sharp and keep me better as a coach because I'm learning how to adapt and overcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, going back to like the same same thing. It's like that I, when I'm reading these books, I'm reading the, the, the educational information. I'm like, I get excited about it. Like when I sign out with Fit Body and Jamie's like, well, this literally happened all last week. They're like, I don't know if you can make it out here in like a week, but we've got our coaches training. I was like, well, let me see what I can do. <laughs> I was like, you're magic. Wanna, you could do anything. I know. <laughs> oh, I want to learn. I want to be there to, to do that. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is important. You know, like I want to, I want to be a part of the seminars. I want to learn all this stuff that you guys are going to be learning. You know what I mean? So um, anytime that I have the opportunity, I, t I say it all the time. Like when I'm at shows, yeah, I'm there to help my clients and stuff, but I'm there to learn too. Like I sit in that front row. I I'm at shows for a all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. For that same reason. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, yes. you, know, you can't, you can't train people to look a certain way on stage. If you're not looking at people on stage, <laughs> I'm like, it's just, it's I, just I, common sense. <laughs> I literally tell people all the time. I'm like, I, you, you, like go to a show as an athlete, even if you're not competing to yeah. study, you yeah. go look at what on stage that way you have a complete understanding and you don't think it's just me saying no we're not ready like go you go see it yourself yeah that's right absolutely that's absolutely so yeah so that kind of touches on why we uh why are do we're doing our coaching thing so i thought that was kind of a, a a fun topic because i think we talk about our again our whys as athletes a lot but not so much as coaches right why we decided to be a part of this industry in a different way right yeah. so um with that to kind of touch on where i am right now because we were going to go this a, a, a earlier, but I jumped into the topic. Um, off season right now, still planning on staying in off season. Um, we were just, you were just talking about how people are responding differently. Well, my weight has been going up <laughs> and I'm like, I don't like that, but my strength has been going up too. And I'm like, okay, you know, you have the, this is going back to, you have to look at different markers. Cause like, yeah, okay. The scale weight is going up. But if I want to put muscle on, which I, I need to put muscle on my legs and my glutes more than anything else, and that's the majority of my body. <clears throat> so just mass wise and, and volume wise, yeah, I should be putting on weight, right? And if my strength is going up and if my lifts are going up, then I'm probably going in the right direction, you know? Yeah. So yep. it's 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 hard sometimes when you're like looking at the like again the scale weight, but at the same time you gotta sit in the back of your head, okay, what is my goal right now? You know, my goal is to build muscle. And in order to do that, you have to put weight on. So I'm in yeah. that spot right now, right? Yeah. I'm sitting 17 pounds <clears throat> over stage right now. I'm a little uncomfortable, but you know what? I'm also growing. Like I am yeah. growing like fucking weed right now. I have yeah. never trained this hard. Um, it's fun. It's exciting. And, you know, I always said that when I was done with bikini, I would go back to training however I wanted to and training hard and yeah. you know, heavy and fun. Go back and for a figure once. Just like <laughs> yeah. fuck around, find out. Um, yep. Yeah. I would love to do that. I would love to go on the figure stage one time just to do me it. Too. Just to do I'm it. Done with yeah. bikini, totally going to do that. Uh -huh. um, but with this level of training right now, I feel like I can hang in bikini for a lot longer um, mm -hmm. because like, it's, it's fun right now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a training partner right now. I'm training five days a week. My, I am so sore. I can't even like walk most days. It's great. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's. Well, you really sensitive. haven't taken a long, like a long off season in a couple of years at this point now too, because you were chasing that Olympic qualification the first year. And then this yep. past year, you really, I mean, you took a break, but it wasn't a long off season. You know, the fact that you qualified so early for the Olympia this year, that gives you the opportunity to take a good, a good solid off season this time. Yeah, Drew and I call it we're we're on house money right now. You know, being in <laughs> Vegas and yep. yeah, I mean we we are we're on house money right now and it's 
it's weird to feel like we have so much time because obviously everyone around me, you know, is yeah. still, you know, Hey, I got to qualify. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, you, you do have to qualify. Mm-hmm. I'm all like, Whoa, I'm weird. Done. Like it's, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a completely different mindset and kind of, you know, picking shows for this year and things like that. So I have at least another 10 weeks of growing. Um, yeah. but <laughs> Jamie, Jamie actually told Drew a couple days ago, she's like, we need to watch her. She might be going too big right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, I rather have, I need it. I rather have that, you know, and then have to pull back and kind of cruise into prep if I have to. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're in a really good spot right now. So yeah, 17 pounds over stage weight, but I'm improving. And okay. the whole goal is for me to beat me and my last package. And I can't do that if I'm st- sitting stage lean. And I think our bodies are similar. It's like, you know, I stayed so lean the first 10 or 15 weeks after the show. And then all of a sudden the weight starts jumping up because yeah. training's back and you have the energy and you're going out, you're enjoying, you're saying, yes. Yeah. So there are things. And, you know, I think that a, for me, especially off season is about the mental clarity as yeah. well. You know, like I just moved to Arizona. I didn't want to like restrict myself. I want to go out on a Friday night and go have a drink with my husband at a new restaurant in a city I've never been in before. Like yep. this is part of off season so that mm-hmm. in a couple months when we pull the trigger, I could keep my head down, stay focused. And I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Absolutely. Well, that also just the focus aspect of it too. Like you're now settled into Arizona and you're like, okay, like I'm, I'm good now. I can settle. I was the same way. Like, cause I knew in the back of my head, I had these changes I wanted to make and I had to come to the, the, the actual making of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now that I did, I'm like, okay, now I can, I need to settle into my new normal now. You know what I mean? Um, and also like, it's so funny because it's like ever since I, you know, reached out to Jamie about the whole coaching thing and stuff like that, my sleep all of a sudden is like so much better. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Peace. It's like, cause it was just sitting in the back of my head for so long. And all of a sudden I let it go. It's out. It's done. And my sleep has gone through the roof and I'm just like, all right. It was all right here. It was all right here. You know what I mean? And like, we don't, we, we, I think we sometimes downplay how much your mental really affects all of that, you know? And I mean, obviously I had some issues too with, with the, you know, CCTS was stressful and then damn in the hospital was stressful and all those kinds of things. But as soon as all of that lifted, it was just like, boom, like I'm falling asleep sitting normally, this is my normal night. Like normally I don't go to bed till after midnight. That's typically me. And I get up, you know, seven 30, eight o'clock in the morning, that kind of thing. Now I'm falling asleep sitting on the couch at 10 PM. You know what I mean? And it's like, Oh, my body needs more rest. And I look at, you know, my sleep score and all that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, it's in the green every night, as opposed to being in the red every night, you know what I mean? And like, especially when you're in off season, that is huge. For I was going to say, that's a good sign of growth. Yes. yes. Your body's like, Hey, I worked hard today. I need yes. rest. Yes. It was funny. I think it was, it was Monday. Well, I can't remember. Night. I think it was Monday. Anyway. Um, I went and I trained, came home, and we, we had gone out. So I think it was, huh, anyway, it was, it was Sunday or Monday, one of the two. Anyway, we had gone out the night before, and we had leftover cake from, from dinner. So yeah, I, was like, yeah. this, I was like, this is going to be my post-workout treat, you know what I mean? So I came home and after training, and I had like a, like a quarter of the piece of cake left over, and I passed out. <laughs> I was like, my body was like, thank you for the sugar. We're going to go to bed. <laughs> Sugar crash. Right now. Sugar yeah, I, was like, I was like, oh, I guess I trained pretty hard today, did I not? <laughs> I was like, you know, but it's a good indicator, again, that your body is doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when I, when I get upset about the, the, the weight thing, I just have to check myself and say, but listen, all these other markers are going in the right direction. So you need to be putting weight on right now. And it's okay to be putting weight on right now. You know what I mean? And this so, is also too where amateurs start to get confused because this is where pros start to go into hiding, right? You don't see yeah. a lot of people posting anymore about their yeah. disease because everyone's growing and everyone's got body fat on them. And this is where amateurs are like, oh, like, you know, the pros stay lean all year round. Yeah. No, no. We just don't post during that time. And no. this is where I, I do. Like, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> I do. And I feel like this is where pros have a responsibility though. Yeah. And they don't show up, you know, and um, it's really important to show all sides of the coin in this yep. sport. You know, I'm not walking around, you know, 10% body fat all the time. I, yep. I can't live that way. Um, well, I can, and I can also say too, like, it depends on your background because I come from, you know, the background of the glamour modeling, which is curvier, you know, when I'm stage lean, that's not a good look for that for that thing for glam that's not really like that no, kind it's of, the opposite no, no they don't like it like it's like it's hard you know when we're talking glamour we're talking soft curvy you know all those kinds of things so i actually like the way i look when i'm heavier 
a lot better. We talked about this before a lot better than when I'm stage lean, you know, yeah. I went back and looked at some of my photos from the shoot that I did two weeks after Japan. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm so lean. I was like, mm-hmm. Holy Jesus. I was like, you know, even when I was at that shoot, the photographer was like, you could get on stage today. I was like, no, I can't. Cause I put on, you know, I put on what, like six pounds, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was like, so you just look like, fuller. No, I yeah. I was like, but I look back at it. I was like, damn, I was lean. Fuck. Yeah. You know, yeah. like prep goggles are a real thing. That. Prep goggles yeah. are a real thing. I started yeah. going through my photos over the weekend from this most recent prep. And I remember, you know, it's like funny, you pull that photo up and you're like, God, I remember that day so clearly and looking at that check in and going, Oh, I'm not lean enough. And I don't see this line. And you're like, Jordan, you're peeled. You were peeled. But mm-hmm. that's, that's why coaches have coaches and prep goggles are a real thing that mm-hmm. you will never ready. You'll always pick yourself apart. You'll always see more than someone else sees. It's, it's a true testament to that. It really is. It really is. And it's like, you know, this is the, this is the time frame too. And I don't know about you, but I get more compliments during this time frame than I do any other time. Yeah. Um, and it's because you're fuller, but you look more muscular and everything too. So like, like I, I was in the gym, the gym the other day and this little teenage girl came up to me and she's like, I just have to tell you, your arms are amazing. And I was like, Oh, Thank you. <laughs> it's like, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know Thank what I mean? Noticing. I know, right? That's but those are, the, those are the things that, that the normal public, they see it and they love it, you know, as opposed to we see it and we're like, oh, we're fat. Yep. And we put ourselves <laughs> in our place right now because we're not fat. We're muscular and we're fuller and we're rounder, but we're not fat by any stretch yeah. of imagination. So, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why, again, I, I do post during the off season and things like that too, because you're right. A lot of the amateurs look at the pros and they're like, well, they stay this this way all the time. They don't, Yeah. you know? And, you know, lifestyle clients too. Jamie and I were just talking about this a couple weeks ago. Us saying we're fat yeah. to a lifestyle client or to someone that's on a huge weight loss journey, they don't, they don't gel with that very well. Mm-hmm. They don't understand no. that. Right. Us saying like to us, when we're 15 pounds over stage weight, that's our fat. That's our fluffy. Yeah. But that's actually a really healthy looking and it we're is. still really, really lean compared to 99 percent of America. That's just the way that the, the America is right now. Yep. So when she said that, I was like, that's perspective. Right. Yeah. Like making sure that you're not demeaning or um, talking down about yourself and the way you look when 99% of the people are going to look at our photos and go, man, I wish I looked like that. Exactly. And we're putting a negative con, you know, notion on that look yep. and what that looks like. Yep. So it's just really, as you're, when you're a coach, you have to be mindful about those things. You have to be mindful about the way, what you're posting, what you're saying, how you're talking about yourself, because the 100%. way that you perceive yourself is probably the way you perceive your own clients as well. That's right. right? Mm-hmm. So it's, just something to, to keep in the in the back of the mind and for all pros watching you know we have to realize that it, in every season of of our season mm-hmm. that we're still in better shape than 99 percent of the population yeah it's over because i see this a lot we go into reddit to facebook and stuff and i see girls that post and they're like i'm so fat like at 13 weeks out or whatever and i'm like bro you look amazing <laughs> and i'm like this is exactly how you should look at 13 weeks out you know what yeah. I mean? Like, just, just, just trust the process. You are not fat by any stretch of the imagination. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're right where you're supposed to be right now. You know, it's yeah. okay to be a little fuller right now. You've got, you've got four months to figure this out. Like, it's and not- truly, like the scale doesn't mean shit. No. Like it really doesn't like I'm no. 17 pounds over stage weight. This is the leanest and most muscular I've ever been at this weight. So am I a little uncomfortable right now? Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable, but I ha- I go back to those photos and where I was in the weight from years ago. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I am uh-huh. fine. Like, we are fine. Yes. So you just have to be real. You just have to be real and honest with yourself. And listen, yeah. some of us blow our reverse and maybe we are a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. Learn from it accept it, deal with it, move on for the next one. That's all you can do is like learn from the process and every, that's why every single reverse, we've talked about this through our reverse, we keep getting better and better because we learn every time what works for us, what doesn't. And then we make that reverse so, so much better the next time. Yep. And like, and I, I don't know if you're guilty of this, but I am like looking at other of our peers and saying like, like good example is Jennifer, you know, Jennifer from, uh, from Cuties Carp on the stage. She's one of my posing clients and one of my sponsored athletes. And like, she's in off season right now. She's my size, she's my height. You know what I mean? Um, but she tends to go on stage a little heavier than me. Um, and right now she's like, when she's in off season, she's like, all oh, my weight goes to my midsection. And, I, and I'm like, yeah, but all I'm looking at is how beautiful your freaking glutes and quads look right now, because that's what I want. You know what I mean? Like that, I'm yeah. like, you look at your stomach because that's your problem area. 
I'm looking at, I wish I had your quads, quad sweep right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm looking at, I wish I, I wish I had those upper outer glutes that you've got right now. You know, the hamstring Perception. Cross, I wish I had those. You know what I mean? So it's like for everything that you try to cut yourself down about, there's somebody else looking at you wishing they had that. You know what I mean? And that's how I am with her. I'm like, I, I'm like, okay, I'm okay. And honestly, I use her as a, as a, as a barometer for myself too. Cause I'm like, if I want to put on that size in my legs, I got to do this. You know, I got to put the weight on, you know? And I'm like, well, I want, I want to have legs like that. I got to push hard. Yeah. But it is like, you know, so you can use that as a crutch or you can use it as a benefit. So I mm-hmm. always try to, I always try to use it as a benefit for me. Like, okay, I'm good. I got, cause I got I got to get those, I got to get those legs. I got to get those glutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. It's when I went to, um, road, road for the Olympia, mm-hmm. um, I checked in with, with Tyler and Bill Sabellia, and then obviously JM was there. And it's funny because, you know, Amy was there with me and she was, uh, a week or two, it was a week, a week out from legions. Yeah. And she goes, she goes up to pose and Tyler's like, the Jamie goes, why is she so lean right now? Because we were still at that point, like four weeks, four, four or five weeks out from the Olympia. And she was like, uh, well, we're thinking about putting her into a show next week. Uh, but he, he thought at that moment, he was like, why is she so lean right now? We're still four weeks out from the Olympia. Like he was yeah. trying to protect her. He wasn't yep. expecting her to show up to the roads, the Olympia peeled like she was. Right. Yep. I looked more like four, four to six weeks out, but that was, that was actually like it was such a small thing but it was endearing to me because like yeah. he got it like you yeah. know he wasn't expecting us to show up like looking peeled and ready for the olympia tomorrow he was expecting a more healthier look being four to six weeks out yeah. so that was really encouraging for me and it's also like when i just did a posing call before before this recording this podcast and the my athlete was like i just had a meal so i don't look at my stomach and i'm like i'm not looking at that no. i'm looking at overall shape from top to bottom but again like we all have our things that we you know connect to what we like or don't like about our physique and we assume that the person evaluating us goes right to those as well right. when most of the time they're not just like you said you're you know admiring something about Jen's physique or you're yep. looking you know the the shape from top to bottom from a coach's perspective most of the time we're not going to that problem area that you're so fixated on right because the other thing too is that I know like you know, if your weight goes to your stomach, I get that because when you prep, it's not going to be there anymore. I don't care about that right now. You're not prepping. You know what I mean? Like, like right. we're, women, we're women. We carry our weight in our waistline and in our hips. Like that's, that's typically what happens. And we get that. Yeah. Us yeah. Yeah. Too. yeah. Uh-huh. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's, I get it. Understand. And I understand why you're, why you're upset about it. Cause I get the same way about mine. I, I understand that too. Yeah. I'm like, but I talked about that as a bikini athlete, you know, you yeah. think that you're supposed to look a certain way all the time, but you're not like you're nope. like season you're supposed to have more body fat the suit's supposed to be looser things nope. like that season it's a completely different look when check-ins you're looking for lines you're looking for new things each week it's hard yep. it's hard to go back and forth between those those seasons yep absolutely so so yeah so right now i'm just loving life as far as that's concerned i'm like okay if my lips lifts keep going up i'm okay with my weight going up as long as my lips, lips keep going up one thing i'm hoping well is I'll just wait for your assessment on sunday i know i know Except I know. Well, that's what I'm hoping. One of the things that he can help me with is I have a hard time with activating my right glute versus my left. Um, and I've always been like that. And it's been ever since I started with bikini because of posing on my right side all the time. So it's something I'm actively working on, but I can actively feel it's not the same, you know? So I'm hoping that it's, it's something he can, I can have like maybe a eureka moment or something along that line where I can get oh, it. Oh, you will. To... Don't worry. <laughs> that, will get it be like, oh! that will be addressed in the nine other things that you don't even know yeah. are I don't know. worry. <laughs> I know. Well, one thing I can tell, like that that's the other thing too, when I go into off season is because I start lifting heavier. So I can start feeling the impingements and things like that more. Right. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. I feel that my lower back more, I, when I'm in, in, in season, my lower back doesn't bother me at all. Cause I'm not lifting heavier and I'm not trying to push harder and things like that. You know what I mean? But I feel it now. Like I was trying to, I was trying to wait to get my massage done until after Phoenix, because I know that I'm going to have to fly and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, Oh, it'd be good to get body work done when I come home. But I was just in so much pain from lifting. I was like, no, I, I, I got to go get my body work done now. I got to go now. It is what it yeah. is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it helped. But it's, it's at that point, too, like, I was at the point where I was sitting in my chair here on my desk, like, trying to work. And I'm like, oh, my glute, my, my back hurt. You know what I mean? As I'm just sitting here. So, like, I got to go. I, I'm like, I can't sit on a flight forever and, like, have that going on. So, 
I'm nope. like, I know, I got to get my work done. So I'm like, going today. Uh, <laughs> there you <laughs> so, go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it all did too. It didn't cure it, but it definitely loosened everything up in there. So now I can get into it a little bit better because I was foam rolling and I was stretching and I was all doing all the things and nothing was moving. And I was just freaking, I was like, no, this has got to, this has got to end. <laughs> got to get. <laughs> I was like, I got to get somebody. So I go to my, my man, Moses. And he freaking got, got in there for me. It was cracking me up because my glutes are so tight. Like he would try to press in my glute. My whole body would jump off the table. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, was, I told him, I was like, I'm trying to relax. I'm like, it's just my freaking muscles are so fucking tight and tied up together. I'm like, they can't. I'm like, so, yeah, that's part of what we That's do. when you got to go ourselves. twice in a week. I know, for real. Oh, yeah. God. And then yeah. I was trying to pull out my, my Theragun and my Theragun stopped working. So I'm like, great freaking awesome so i don't know yeah. what's wrong with it but i'm like i really need that right now <laughs> i don't know why it won't turn on it's driving me crazy no i have it on the charger there's something oh. wrong with it like i actually have it plugged in and i'll unplug it up if i've had to charge it for two days it won't work so fun yeah, yeah all the things <laughs> all the things all the things <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're just moving right along. I'm, I'm thinking about trying to vlog a little bit this weekend um, while I'm out there. So we'll see. I've got my little camera. I always say that and then I forget to take it out and actually, actually record things. So we'll, we'll see how well I do with that. <laughs> yeah. Saturday is going to be wild. So John Jewett um, is coming to train all of us the entire day. So that's going to be yep. super exciting. Um, Friday night we have the cocktail mixer. So I guess you could do it then. And then Saturday, Sunday we do our team photo. So Yep. Yeah, Saturday's just going to be long, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how, much, how much, how exciting Long day of learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I'm excited, I'm excited though. It's always it. fun. It's always a great weekend, like, just to really connect and yeah. get education, and then we get all of our jackets and the cool things that Jamie and Greg make for us for the year, so it's fun. Yeah. It's a really cool way to kick off the season. Well, I'm excited about that. Um, and then to finish out for today, let's go through some, some things, some things. So the first thing we're going to go through some, a few questions with the first thing I wanted to pull up is something that popped up into the newsfeed this past week. And that was the, the enhanced Olympics. <laughs> so I pulled up, I pulled up the, uh, like one of the, um, uh, news articles that popped up about this. So I can pull it up on the screen if my screen share will work, but essentially what this is, is there is a billionaire that let me pull this up. Um, while you pull that up, I'm gonna walk because my, my coffee just got delivered. Okay, so I think it's showing on the screen. I can see it. Okay, cool. It's in this this thing. Um, so this billionaire from Australia is bankrolling. Um, an, an enhanced Olympics. Um, just my screen here. There we go. So essentially, what this is is this is the Olympics without testing. So PEDs will be legal. Um, and the thought process behind it is they feel like if they do it where it's not restricted, people will do it more with better education and better um, use, better you know, better actual drugs and all those kinds of things, blah, 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 blah. So it'll actually be safe. So what are your thoughts on something like this? Because they plan on rolling it out. And I looked up the Wikipedia thing too. It was supposed to come out this this, this year, this, uh, 2024 in December. So, yes. um, so we'll see how quickly that, that comes, comes about, but they're, they're planning on doing all the major Olympic, uh, Olympic sports and things like that. So, um, this is the, I think I can flip it over to the Wikipedia so you guys can see that too. Um, here it is. So yeah, so performance enhancing drugs will not be mandatory for participants, but it's, it's, they won't be tested either. Um, so if you're, if you're natural and you want to compete in this, you can, um, basically again, athletes are adults and they have the right to do with their body, what they wish, my body, my choice, your body, your choice, and no government, no, no paternalistic sports federation should be making these decisions for athletes, particularly around products that are FDA regulated and approved. If we cut out all the waste, the layers of bureaucracy, the needless building of infrastructure, this event can be delivered for virtually nothing. And we can use all the surplus profits to pay the athletes to invest in R and D build better and better technology and build a bigger and bigger event. So what are your thoughts behind something like this? I honestly, I, I don't mind it. Um, 
you know, so just to be clear, this is not the Olympia. This is Olympic. No. Olympics. Olympics. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's PED usage in any sport. And if you're smart enough, you can you run the PEDs and then also pass a, a drug test. So Correct. it's it's just allowing the athletes to be honest about, you know, where they're at and what they're doing and show up on a level, level playing field. Yep. It'll be very interesting to see if this continues to be a thing. Is this going to be a one and done? What athletes yeah. join this league or not? You also have to think that once you, once you kind of agree to do this enhanced Olympics, it almost will sacrifice your chances at the real Olympics at that point because you are saying, yes, <clears throat> I have yep. Done. I don't think a lot of natural athletes are going to go in there, maybe one or two, and they're going to go in there with more of a chip on their shoulder of, hey, maybe I can get first place non to these all these enhanced people natural. Right. That would really be my only thought process behind that. So it will be very interesting if this is like, you know, like I said, a continuous thing, a one and done, um, and, and what athletes start to participate. But again, I think it's everywhere. And it's just a matter of, you know, if you can pass a drug test or not, which, you know, goes into like the natural federations of bodybuilding. There are some, you know, athletes you hear about or know about that, you know, have ran a cycle and then all of a sudden yeah. they're showing up to a natural show and you're like, yep. how did, how did that happen? How did they pass a test? It's doable. It's, it's very doable if you know 100%. what you're doing. Yep. Um, it's not ethical. It's not nope. right, but people do it. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I don't know. That's, that's just, that's some jumbled thoughts, but. Yep. No, my, my two cents is very, I agree with you on all of that. I think that it's very prevalent in our regular Olympics anyway. Uh, people just know how to go get around it. You know, people have been, have been trying to get around the system for years and years and years and not just with, with PEDs, but also like, and I don't know the specifics of this, but back in the day, um, I think it was China, it was either China or Japan that were forging birth certificates so that their kids that were playing baseball could play while they were older in the Little League, Little League World Series. So it was like they would show up to the Little League World Series and these are grown men freaking competing against teenagers. You know what I mean? So that when people want to get around the system, they will. Yeah. When people want to get around the system, they will. They can and period. they will. Mm -hmm. they, period. So um, you know, you, you see some of this stuff on, on social media and things like that. And people are like, plot twist, it's all the same athletes that sign up. <laughs> it's like, yeah, pretty yes. much, pretty yeah. much, you know? Yeah. Um, and the thing, the thing with it is I, I feel like when you go down this path of making it socially acceptable, um, people don't abuse it as much. You know, I always go back to the, the concept of alcohol in, in Europe. You know, they have much fewer alcohol related deaths and issues, things like that, than we do here in the States because there's no restrictions. It's not alcohol. taboo. No. Yeah. There's, Teenager you can go trying to get fucking hammered every week. Correct. You could sit there. Like my husband's a good example of this. He grew up in Spain, right? So, uh, wine was just at the table all this, all the time. And now he barely drinks ever. He has never, he's never smoked anything in his life other than a cigar when I made, when I made him. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you make him. <laughs> I know. Other than what I've had him do, he hasn't smoked ever. He hasn't taken a drug in his life. None of those kinds of things because it was never something that was like told, he was told he couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if we have this propensity as humans, when we're told we shouldn't be doing something, we want to do it, you know? More. Yeah. And the thing I go back to with, with PEDs, things like that, is the reason those were developed in the first place is for medical purposes to help people, you know, muscle wasting diseases and things like that. You know, there's a reason why people took that stuff. It was to have a better quality of life, to get through these, these, these problems, things like that. And it was under the doctor's supervision. So it was never anything that was abused. So if we make it so socially acceptable, A, people won't want to abuse it as badly. B, they'll get good, clean sources. <laughs> you know, as it stands right now, you don't know what the hell you're buying most of the time. Nope. Nope, nope. And that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest yep. problem. You really don't know what you're putting into your body on a daily basis a lot of the times. Um, you know, and it go, I go back to the, the situation with marijuana and things like that too, for the longest time, marijuana here in the States was illegal everywhere you go. Now it's not, now it's regulated. Now people are using it to enhance the quality of their life every single day. And there's big business coming out of it too. You know, yeah. I really feel like a lot of this stuff always goes back to follow the money. 
right? Follow yeah. money. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. if you can find a way to make money with it, the, the government's got to find a way to make money with it. <laughs> and if they can, then it'll happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I go back to, I think that there's nothing wrong with this concept because I think the people that want to be natural are going to be natural anyway. Um, and now kind of take us into this next question right here. Um, from so a listener. It was, yeah, from a listener. So I'm going to actually read the full question that she sent in. Let me pull it up. <clears throat> let's see she said that have you seen the interview with sandy that she did with flex lewis she said that 2024 will bring more natural shows for the npc tyler's looking to add more natural shows for the pros in 2025 um and she knew this was gonna happen blah 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 so um there's more natural shows coming to the npc and what do we think about that so this leads into this concept of if you want to stay natural you're still going to stay natural. You know what I'm saying? Like if you want to be enhanced, you're going to be enhanced and you're going to figure out a way to get around it. If you, if you need to, that kind of thing. But I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a personal choice as far as if you want to be natural, you, you're going to find ways to stay natural. If you want to be enhanced, you're going to find ways to stay enhanced, you know? So the governing body above us isn't going to change what you physically and morally and ethically and all those kinds of things want to do. That's inside of you that nothing out here is ever going to change that. You know what I mean? So um, going back to what do you think about more natural shows coming to the NPC and then to the IFBB? What do you think about that? I mean, I think it's great. You know, there are some athletes that want to stay natural. And because of that, they um, are not confident getting on a normal, you know, NPC stage, even though that they, they could, you know, be very competitive. But right. to them, they just want to maybe have a level playing field. So I th just think it provides something for everyone. I think the shows are going to be on the smaller side for sure. Yes. Um, had their first round of it with uh, Tim Gardner, I believe after um, the weekend of Atlantic Coast at the end of last year. It was a smaller show, smaller classes, but they, they still they still had a good amount of participants. Um, so I think it will be something to see, you know, if it's number one worth it. You know, by, at the end of the day, MPC IFBB is a business, right? Correct. And promoters are putting on and spending money out of their own pocket for these shows. For example, Tim last year had, you know, the NPC day on Saturday and then Sunday had to rent the ballroom again for this natural show so you know it's just gonna number one does it work financially and is a business move number two is it going to enhance our sport maybe adding more natural shows is going to bring more amateurs back to the sport you know we were just mm -hmm. talking about that earlier that a lot of people don't don't really recommit after show number one is that because they don't want to maybe put in the time and the effort naturally to get yeah. as big as they need to you know versus someone that's enhanced maybe it will enhance then the numbers on the natural side and it will bring our levels back up as a, as a bodybuilding industry um so i'm not against it by any means i think it's just something that we have to wait and see if it's if it's worth it or not i don't think that it's necessarily needed if that makes right. sense i feel like we've talked about this all the time people can be very competitive natural if they're willing to put in the time and the mm -hmm. patience and the, and the hard work um yep. but maybe it gives people an opportunity to get there faster on stage proud level playing field with pe the people around them yep and i would say what we just went back to with the talking about the enhanced olympics too like you'll see one or two people that will want to do this, do the enhanced Olympics naturally, just to say that they stood up against those, those enhanced people and competed against them naturally. Right. That was, that was me. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like, I want to say I was, you know, I was competing as the best in the world as a natural athlete. You know what I mean? So there's going to be those people. There's going to be those people. So um, I agree with you. I don't think it's necessarily needed. However, I think it does give people a platform um, and I think it's something that they can grow from, meaning like that at the NPC IPB can grow from. I think the reason the catalyst to this is likely having to do with the numbers that they've been seeing at like the Ben Weeder show. You know, the Ben Weeder is the one tested show where you can actually qualify for the Olympia. You can win your pro card naturally, all those kinds of things. Um, it's the only one here in the States where you can win your pro card naturally and you can qualify for the Olympia naturally, right? Because they test. Um, and they saw the numbers spike as soon as they did that. They saw the numbers for that particular show spike. Now, is that going to happen across the board? No. I think what will happen is it'll get to a certain point with these natural shows, You, the numbers are going to suffer, right? There's just yeah. not as many people. Because the thing is, is you got to realize that if, if you're staying natural in this sport, kudos, fantastic. I think that's phenomenal, wonderful. However, when you get to the highest levels, they don't care. Right. 
right? Yeah. yeah. They don't care. You don't get a badge of honor. You don't get a special, like nothing for being, for being natural. That's just, it just is what it is, right? They, they want to see you show up and do whatever you're supposed do to do. Do your best. That's yes. right. That's right. So, you know, at, at the lower levels, at the local levels, at the when you pro card level, things like that, I think it's great. But I think that there is a law of diminishing returns. I don't think that by adding more shows, you're going to have more athletes show up to a certain point. Yes, but then it's going to drop off. So, you know, I think they, they add a few more shows. Maybe they add one, you know, like we said, Tim's got one in Florida. You know, you add a pro, maybe one more pro qualifier, maybe one more Olympia qualifier and see how those numbers do. And then if those numbers are good, then you add one more, you know, maybe add something on the West coast. So you got something out there, you know, that kind of thing, but do it one at a time just to see how the numbers come from it. And if the numbers continue to grow then yeah, continue to add more shows, right? Makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. If they, if they drop off, then you know, not to, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, again, I go back to, I don't necessarily think that going the natural show route is the, is the best direction as far as like to increase numbers in the sport. I think what would help increase numbers in the sport is if we had another division that was more, even more entry level than bikini. The big bikini. Mm -hmm. But that yep. has been many conversations behind the scenes in my house. Absolutely. Yep. yep. So I think that would actually increase the numbers quite significantly. Yeah. Um, you know, go back to, like, we've talked about this before, go back to a look of what bikini first started as, you know, the, the, the model look, you know, that kind of yeah. thing, IG influencer look, whatever you want to call it. So um, I like what you said, what do you call it at uh, cuties sports model? Like sports? Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a swimsuit model, you know, when it first started, it was supposed to be like a Hooters girl look, you know, you go back yeah. to, um, to Janet Leung, she was a Hooters girl. That's what she was when she started in this, in this bodybuilding, you know, yeah. and she, you know, over time she Come, grew muscularity wise. Yeah. She got leaner. She got more conditioned. She grew more muscle. That's what happens over time. But when she first got into it, she was a Hooters girl. She was a Miss Hooters international. Like that's what she did. So that was the look that was bringing a ton of bikini girls into the sport. Um, so I think if we had something like that again, I think that that would definitely increase I agree. the numbers. Definitely I agree. Definitely the numbers. So something that we've also talked about too is like at like the class shows, like with Joe, because he would totally love this. Is like anyone that's either competing as a true novice or thought thinks that they're wanting to compete as a true novice, like Friday night after check-ins, taking a group of them backstage and like showing yeah. them like. A like letting them like walk the stage, showing them like how people line up, where tan is going to be, and just allowing like this openness of being more communication, yeah. what it looks like and being more comfortable because for so many first time competitors, a part of the feedback of why they didn't have a good show day experience is they just felt like they, they, they were into walking it. into something, they had no clue what was going on, yeah. everything's moving so fast. For most of the time, a true novice is doing three classes. They're doing true novice, novice, and they're open and it's back to back to back. And they just felt like it was just this hustle and bustle. And so if we give them a little bit more information up front, allow them to see the backstage area and tour it, it might give them a little bit more confidence and security going into show day on Saturday. Absolutely. So these are all things that we're talking about behind the scenes too, of how to make the experience better. And I agree with you. It's not necessarily more natural shows. It's just making the amateur who's a first time competitor, a little bit more comfortable and introducing them to the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that idea. That, that, that'd be, that'd be really easy to do. You could even do it. The, the athlete meeting before the show started on Saturday, you could do it then. Yeah. 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 You know? Like, Hey, if anybody's a true novice and you want to come backstage with me, let me introduce yep. you to the to the people. If you need something, this is Bill. Like, you know, just yep. making it more attainable and comfortable. Yep. And, you know, they used to do that. I'm thinking about that. This was years ago. Um, a couple of the shows that were here in Virginia, because I remember I was a pro at the time, and they would have me come up on stage and, and just demo the, 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 the pro poses real quick for yeah. the, the girls that morning before the show started. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just so they could see what was going on. Um, I remember... This was before I was a pro. They did this morning of the show. I was in figure and the, the head judge, he's no longer with the NPC anymore, but the head judge was like, for figure, you're, no, you're not allowed to twist in your quarter turns. So meaning like old school figure used to be front pose, quarter turn, front pose, quarter turn, same pose. It's the same pose. Oh, you okay, twist. got it. So when they go, yep, got it. Yep, can't twist. That was old school figure, right? But nobody's done that for like forever. Nobody's done that forever. Everybody's twisted because you want to see the waistline and all that kind of stuff, whatever. Yeah. Morning of the show, morning of the show, the head judge told all of us in figure that we weren't allowed to twist. And I've never posed like that before in my life. And I was like, 
Uh, and I've been competing for a few years at this point. It wasn't anything new to me. And it freaking flipped me for a loop. I was like, yeah, how no did kidding. you do this? I've never done this before. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can Sorry, understand that's how. Bullshit. I know. <laughs> I know. It really was. It really was. There's a reason why he's no longer with the NPC IBB. I'm yeah. just going to say that much. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's the least of the reasons why. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, like stuff like that, I can understand being a true novice competitor coming in and just feeling like you're being thrown into this. Like, okay, what do I do now? You know, we try to, we try to, um, mitigate that as best we can as being coaches and posing coaches and I, you know, my, my group classes, I took, take them through all that stuff, but there's nothing that feels the same as getting up on that stage. There's nothing no. that feels the same as getting up on the stage. And we have the athletes meeting, but they don't know what to ask. Right. Again, they're new. They have right. no clue what, what they need to ask to, to know. Yep. You know? So, yep. That's, no, so I that's think that's a great idea. Though. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Just, it, it doesn't have to be long. Take an extra 15, 20 minutes and just send them through the, the backstage area and all that kind of stuff. Just so that yeah. they're aware of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Yeah. So, so anyway, going back to the the bottom line with the natural shows, yeah, I think it's great. But again, I think it get, it's going to get to a point where it's not going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of diminishing returns. You know, like I said, you're going to get to a certain right. point where it's going to increase things, but then it's not going to go any further than that. Right. So there are other things we can do instead. Um, let's see. Let's go with this one. So this was a question the girl asked. She wants to compete again. She wants to continue to um, train and things like that, but she doesn't feel like she wants to compete right now. So she wants to continue to do the lifestyle, but she just doesn't have that itch to get on stage right now. So as a coach, what would you do with her as your client? If she, she wants to continue again, continue to grow, continue to build, build muscle, but she doesn't feel, thinks she wants to compete sometime in the future. She just doesn't know yeah. right now. She doesn't feel like it. So First of all, love that. Love that. Yeah. Love the self-assessment and being vulnerable and saying, "Hey, I think, but I don't know." That's mm-hmm. that's the first thing. Um, my first question back to them is, "What are you doing right now? Like, are you tracking macros? Are you following the diet? Are you on a scheduled progressive overload type training plan? Like, what does that look like?" If they are, then I would suggest like a prep for prep, and I'll get into that in a second. If they're not even kind of following a lifestyle, I would say, let's just kind of get back into the lifestyle again. Let's just do the basics. Let's track water again. Let's start tracking some macros. Let's get into, you know, a a building phase and let's see how you feel about that. Prep for prep. You know, if she's already tracking macros or doing some sort of meal plan or, you know, and following some sort of uh, training plan, maybe I put that, put her on a little bit of cardio and we go into like a little bit of like a lean or like a cleanup phase where we're not necessarily trying to lose a ton of fat mass. We're just trying to clean up the diet a little bit, try to clean up the, the body composition a little bit. And most of the time clients will be like, okay, I'm, I am ready. I'm ready to take it to the mm-hmm. next level. They start to see the progress a little bit. They start to see a little bit more lines. Now they're getting more excited and they're ready to commit. Or some people will be in this prep for prep, you know, four to six weeks. And they're like, I can't do this 30 minutes of cardio a couple times a week. So I know I'm not going to be able to do seven days a week of cardio. Yeah. And then they, they know. Um, so that's the way I would I would approach it. You know, and number one, you just got to keep relying on the mental. You know, if the mental is not there and if you are not willing to commit, then it's okay. You just keep living the lifestyle in a different way. And then right. someday that might change. It might change six months from now, a year from now, but keep doing that self-assessment of yourself like you're already doing because that's half the battle right there. Yeah. And I would agree with that. And just to, to add to that, like you said, being willing to pivot, being willing to set, do the self-assessment and say, okay, yes, I'm, I'm ready to do this now or no, I'm not ready to do that now. You know, that kind of thing. I would say have a long-term goal. So if this person wants to eventually at some point get back on stage, okay, what do you want to get back on stage doing? Right. Right. You want to get back on stage in bikini. Do you want to get back on stage in figure? What is your ultimate goal? Where do you want to be? Okay. If they say, like you said, my, when I'm done with bikini, I'm going to get on stage with figure. Okay. Well, that's going to look different with your training. Right. So if your goal ultimately, maybe three, four years down the line, you want to get back on stage and figure, okay, cool. Then then we're going to set our small goals right now to build you towards that. Right. And again, if that changes and you decide, I actually don't want to do that. Okay, cool. Let's change your, let's change your programming. Right. And no harm was done. No, no, no harm was done. I have girls on my roster. They have no interest in getting on stage this year. They don't want to get on stage until 2025, but they're still acting right now. Right. Like they want to get on stage in 2025. They're right. building toward bikini or the division that they're working in. They're still following some sort of lifestyle. They just have more flexibility right now. Yep. 
And there's nothing wrong with that too. And honestly, I think sometimes having that kind of mentality is better for you as a bodybuilding person because you're not fixated on a show date. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, you're, you're learning more, to yeah. be in the lifestyle. That's right. You're learning to just be. Yes. You're learning to just exist as a bodybuilder versus yes. this is my ultimate goal is to be on stage on XYZ date, right? No, yes. I'm just, my ultimate goal is to be a bodybuilder. That is my ultimate goal right now. That's right. cool. Yeah. You know, that's cool. You'll probably make the most progress of anybody. Yes. Because you're just yes. existing as, yeah. as a, as a physical bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. And going back to the mentality component, there is something very powerful in not having the stress or the, the date on your mind. Yeah. You're just living, you're just yep. doing there is something very powerful in that mindset. Absolutely. That's why I tell people too, don't ever say you're going to retire from bodybuilding because you never know you may get the itch again. You know, I did that. I, I, I retired and I'm like, no, I'm actually not done. <laughs> I'm going back. I still, I'm like, I still got, I still got more in the tank. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, because other things can happen too. Like you can have other opportunities come up. Like the Masters Olympia came around. I'm sure there's a lot of guys and girls that thought I'm never going to compete again on the pro level because I'm over the hill as far as, as far as getting on the Olympia stage. But then the Masters Olympia comes around. Oh well, shit, I could do that. You know, let me, let me get back into this. They didn't stop training. They were still living the lifestyle. They just started shifting towards that goal. You know, I don't know. So Hidetada Yamagishi won the Masters Olympia for men's bodybuilding. I don't know when the last time he, it was that he stepped in the open bodybuilding stage, but it's been, it's been several been years. A, been a bit. Yep. Yeah. It's yep. been several years. So it's not like he just automatically was like, oh, I'm going to be a bodybuilder again. No, he was always a bodybuilder. He just shifted his focus towards, okay, now I'm going to go win this Masters Olympia now. Yeah. And he owns the powerhouse in, out in Las Vegas. And when I was prepping for my first Olympia out there, I was out there for two weeks. I was training in that gym and he was training every morning, 630. Yeah. In the morning. He was still getting his training in, still yeah. doing cardio. He wasn't competing at the time. And the Masters Olympia wasn't talked about yet. So yeah. Yeah, he just continued to live the lifestyle. Yep. So I actually, again, I think this actual spot that this particular person is in is a great spot to be in. Me too. Me I too. It's a great spot to be in. So Me too. Um, let's do one more question. This is a good one. I think, um, best type of cardio to preserve muscle mass and legs. What do you think? It depends. I know. <laughs> um, probably, probably stair mill and bike. Um, it, it really, it depends. Like for me this past season, I did bike and you could say that I, I need to not build up my legs anymore, but it actually cut me down yeah. for other people. It could actually build up their quads. Um, stair mill is going to build your quads and your glutes. Um, I like the arc trainer. We've talked about the arc mm -hmm. trainer before. It's really good on the glutes. Um, that's really, that's it. Yeah. But yeah, in any kind of cu cutting phase though, you have to realize that you will be sacrificing some lean tissue. There's no way around that. Yes. But, but the ones that are activating the legs or doing some sort of stepping motion are probably better for preserving as much leg mass as possible. Yep. And also thinking about um, longevity too. Uh, for example, running is very, very bad on your joints. Very, very bad on your joints. So personally, if I run, my, my legs end up looking like this, right? But also my hips and my knees and my ankles, all those things hurt, right? Yeah. So we talked about the, the arc trainer. Um, I try to stick to the arc trainer. I try to stick to ellipticals as much as possible because it doesn't hurt my joints as much. Um, and again, that constant impact, I don't do well with hit cardio because the constant impact hurts, you yes. know, as, as women too, we're not built to be runners. We're just not, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're built to have babies. We have hips, <laughs> we hips. have curve to us. You are not Those straight stupid up hips. <laughs> I know, right? So, uh, so those things, those things will affect you just health wise too, which is if you've got impingements, like I was just talking about my glutes, it's going to, it's going to affect how you grow. Yeah. And if you've got problems with your, with your joints, if you've got problems with all those ligaments, things like that, it's going to affect how you hold muscle, yes. you know? So you have to think about the, the health as well as the type of cardio, right? I friggin' hate Stairmaster just because I hate it. I probably, yeah. probably could do it, but I don't because I hate it. <laughs> you know, like it probably wouldn't be bad for me to hold on to muscle mass on my lower half, but if I hate it, I'm not going to want to do it. You know right. what I mean? So I just don't, you have to think about things like that too. If I'm on the, if I'm on the um, treadmill, it's walking. I never run. It hurts yeah. way too much for me to run. 
or it's way too yeah. much for me to run. So I'll jog outside sometimes, but again, I can't do that for several days in a row. I'll do it like once and then I'll do some walking the next time because if I, if I continue to run on, on the pavement, I'm fucked when it comes to my, to my, my ankles, my hips, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, prep's difficult because it's about finding that, um, that balance of really intense cardio to, you know, obviously burn body fat and then really intense training and trying to keep your log book at the same for as long as you can, but also recovery. Yep. Recovery is <laughs> so, huge. Know, tell, yeah. And, you know, you can't really sacrifice the training aspect. So I tell, you know, my team that, you know, you have to look at cardio. So like if you're choosing a cardio equipment that gets your heart rate up, but your legs feel like trash and now you're not able to hit glutes the next day, that's a problem that we need right. to work at. Look at. So maybe the day before legs or the day of legs, you don't do stair mill. You do some sort of incline walking or something a little bit gentler so it's not as taxing on the lower body. But listen, in any prep phase, you're going to be tired. Your body's yes. going to be hurting and things like that. But it is about being very mindful of choosing cardio that can be intense for you, but also allow you to have some recovery to be able to keep training. Yeah. Yeah, because yes. I know there's a lot of people out there that are that subscribe to the whole like slam bam get it done kind of thing. Like they're in the gym for 40 minutes and they're done, and they're just really intense for that 40 minutes and they're out. And that's cool. I can't do that. Recover though, you know. So you have to. Do I never run. To it, I know? never run in a prep. I I, w I wouldn't be able to to do anything. <laughs> nope. No. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's your, your cardio is the smallest piece. Like you said, your, your, your diet and your training are the top two. And that your is, need, your non-exercise activity. Yes. That's what mm -hmm. people like step count, like people underestimate the amount of just the extra movement and walking around that you do per day, how much that does for you. Yep. Like the step count's not just there. So you go, Oh, cool. I hit my step count. It's to, for you to be mindful about standing more and being active and going on a few more walks per day. Yes. And the higher your need is, the lower your cardio can be That's people. Right. That very small thing that you can do is just go on five to 10, 10 minute walks during the day. Yep. You'd be surprised how much that adds up. <laughs> I'm starting to implement, implement that myself because my step count's gone down in off season, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard for me to keep yeah. it up. So when I go to the gym, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do my social media posting and walk for, for 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, if done. you ever that's see me post, it's because I'm, I'm on my, on the, on the elliptical <laughs> posting. That's it. Because <laughs> <That's it. laughs> like I am, like I just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm studying for these certifications and now I'm doing all this new paperwork and things like that for, for coaching and stuff. So I'm sitting a lot more. I'm yeah. sitting a lot more. And it's just yes. like, no, 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 it's, it's, you got to get up and move. Got to get up and move. Yeah. And, and, and as a coach, it. it's very easy to sit for two and a half to three hours and it's, oh shit, I haven't gotten up in a couple hours. Like it's yep. very easy to get caught up in the check-ins and things like that. So I get it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So bottom line is it's person dependent when it comes to cardio, but also think about recovery um, over, you know, you know, intensity too whatever that whatever that equation looks like <laughs> so um we've got more questions here but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up for today so i think we covered a lot today didn't we we did <laughs> we did and also guys so we're gonna work on doing a in-person podcast while i'm out there in arizona this coming weekend so um hopefully we'll get something i'm there till late sunday night so um, I don't know what your schedule looks like, but we'll we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna do a lot of stuff on Sunday before I leave. So Hopefully <laughs> we can get it in. in. I do hear your schedule though, and it is the Super Bowl. So <laughs> I know. I don't care about the Super Bowl though. I literally have not watched a single. I don't watch NFL. I watch college football. So I have there not watched. A, I have not watched a single game this year. Not one. My well, my dad's. I, uh... I dabble in sports betting, so. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, my, my dad's a big New York Giants fan, and I used to be, but since my husband's an Alabama football fan, we, I'm like, I can, I, I can't do both. <laughs> like, I gotta do, I gotta do college or pros, one of the two. Yeah. I can't take a whole weekend. I was like, so I was like, I'm gonna stick with the one that's in my house, which is college. So I watch all college football. I just don't watch the pros. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, and you know, since Nick Saban retired, now it's been a whole upheaval. So we'll see how college football goes this coming year and blah, 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 whatever but yeah i the only thing i watch the, the super bowl for at this point of the car the commercials so um yeah and halftime show and halftime and the national anthem i'm a big you know i went to school for music so uh, there you so go big, big music person so i like the national anthem i like the the, the halftime show and yeah that's it so <laughs> <laughs> All that to say, we'll see what Sunday brings. <laughs> yeah, all that to say, we'll do, we'll, we'll do something. 
something. Maybe we'll just do a little short little clip or something like there that. You go. So we'll do something. <laughs> a little vlog. She's gotta get her assessment in everybody. That's, <laughs> That's what's most right. Important. Most important. Most important. Absolutely. All right. So with that, guys, I'm gonna get rid of this little thingy. All right. Subscribe, comment, like. All of the fun things. Share, 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 share. We are on Spotify too still. So I am uploading both to YouTube and Spotify. So whichever platform you like better, you can use. And we'll definitely be back next week for 25, episode 25. I'm sure we'll have lots of things to talk about and discuss after this coming weekend. And, uh, and that's it. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And we will see you next week with our next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.